In Storyline, there are lots of things you can customize in the slide properties for any slide, like the advanced behavior, also what happens when learners revisit your slide, and also what player controls they see on the slide. So there are a couple of ways that you can adjust the slide properties, and one way is by doing it here in Normal View. You just come down to the base layer of the slide, down here in the Slide Layers pane, and click on the gear icon and up pops this window where you can change whatever you like. And we'll take a closer look at these fields in just a second. The other place that you can get to those same slide properties is in Story View. And you can select a slide here, and you're going to see the slide properties right down here in the lower right. Now the advantage of doing it here in Story View is that you can select several slides all at once and change all of the slides properties um, all at the same time. So that can be a really nice time saver rather than going through and changing lots of slides individually. So if you need to do that, here are a few tips for selecting multiple slides. If you want to select consecutive slides, you can use shift click, or if you're choosing non-consecutive slides, you can use control click and then come down here and make whatever changes are necessary. Another neat trick is you can select one slide in a scene and then hit control A on your keyboard and that's going to select all the slides in that scene. Or check this out, if you select one slide in a scene and then press control A twice, that's going to select all the slides in your entire project. And this is really handy, for example, if you want to, say, remove the previous and next buttons on every single slide in your course. That's a common way to do it, and it saves a lot of clicking over doing it one slide at a time. So once you have your slides selected, you just come down here to the Slide Properties pane, and you can go through and make whatever changes you need. So let's take a look at these. The slide advance, that's pretty straightforward, right? If you select automatically, then the slide's going to advance by itself when the timeline is done. If you choose by user, that means the user needs to make the decision when they move on from the slide. When revisiting, this is a good one, this determines how your slide content behaves if users come back and view it a subsequent time. This is going to default to automatically decide, which means that Storyline is going to decide for you whether to resume or reset the slide when learners come back. And here's the logic that it uses. If the slide has just simple objects like shapes, pictures, characters, narration, things like that, but no interactivity like buttons, for example, then Storyline is going to reset the slide to the beginning of the slide's timeline every time a learner comes back to it. If it does have interactive items, then that means Storyline is going to resume the saved state when learners come back to it. So that's what Automatically Decide is all about. If you want to, though, you can choose Resume or Reset, which means that you're making the decision whether the, the slide is going to resume where the learner left off or reset to its initial state. So that's something that you'll want to take a look at. Another item that you might see here on the slide properties is result slide. And that's only going to show up if you've selected a quiz slide. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. This one right here is a quiz slide, and now we're seeing this result slide drop down. Now, I don't have any result slide in this particular course, but if I did, the result slides that I've set up would be listed here, and then I could connect that quiz question to a particular result slide, which just controls you know, how the results are calculated and displayed to the learner. So if you do want to show your learners their results or report to an LMS, then you'd want to make sure that every quiz slide is connected to a result slide that you're reporting on. The next group of controls here is for navigation. Now you can turn off any of these um, buttons that you see here, like right here on this slide I've got the previous and next buttons turned on. I could turn those off, which is going to cause the player controls to not appear on my player, and I could maybe make my own player controls, which is what a lot of developers like to do. And if that's the case for you, you can easily get rid of those controls and set up your own with triggers and buttons or whatever you want to use. This is going to default to previous and next for content slides, and if you've selected a quiz slide, these will be turned off and the submit button will be turned on. So that's kind of how that works. Okay, the last thing to choose here is for the player features. And this is going to say player defaults, unless you've already changed it. Player defaults means that whatever items you've already set up on your player properties are going to be used for this slide. But maybe on some slides, you know, you might not want the default player controls to show up. Maybe you want to customize um, those things at the slide level. So that's no problem if that's the case. You can choose custom for the selected slides and you can go through here and turn any of these items on or off. And if you're wondering about where to set these things up, like menu, resources, glossary, that's all done in the player properties. So if that's not something that you're familiar with, you can check out our tutorial on customizing the player.